Good morning everyone. It is the second video for your chapter 4 of chemistry that is animal fiber. Today we will be discussing about silk, life cycle of a silk moth and health condition of a worker in the sericulture industry. The first topic that we will be coming across is silk. Silk. It is a natural fiber which is obtained from an insect called silk moth. So, silk fiber are also animal fibers. Silk worms spin the silk fiber. The silk fiber is made up of protein. Silk is the strongest natural fiber. Silk does not conduct heat and is therefore a good insulator, keeping a person warm in winter and cool in summer. It is also a prized fiber because of its natural lustral appearance. Now let us learn about discovery of silk. The discovery of silk was made in China a long time back. According to an old Chinese legend, the Empress Si Tung Chi was asked by the Emperor Huang Ti to find the cause of a damaged leaves of mulberry tree growing in their garden. The empress found white worms eating up mulberry tree leaves. She also noticed that they were spinning shiny cocoons around them. Guarded secret from hundreds of years. Later, uh, later on, traders and travelers introduced silk to the country. The route they traveled is called the Silk Route. Even today, China leads the world in silk production. India is also among the leading silk producing countries of the world. In India, a large number of women are engaged in various activities related to the silk production, such as the rearing of silkworms, reeling of silk from cocoons, and processing of raw silk into fabrics. Now, let us learn about life history of silk moth formation of silkworm. As we can see in the figure, the female silk moth lays egg on the mulberry leaf. The eggs are hatched into very small larva within a week. The larva of silk moth are called caterpillar or silkworm. The silkworm feed on the leaves of mulberry tree and grow bigger in size. When the silkworm or caterpillar is ready to enter the next stage of its development called pupa, its first weaves a net to hold itself. Then it swings its th head from side to side. During these movement of head, the silkworm secrete fiber air and becomes silk fiber or silk thread. Soon the silkworm or caterpillar cover itself by silk fiber and turns into pupa. This covering is known as cocoon. The silkworm continues to develop in the form of pupa inside the cocoon to form the silk moth. In order to produce silk, the silkworm developing inside the cocoon as pupa is not allowed to mature into an adult silk moth. So as soon as the cocoon is formed, it is used to obtain silk fiber and the developing silkworm or pupa gets killed. Some of the silkworm as pupa are however allowed to leave and mature into a silk moth. So they can lay eggs to produce more silkworm. Now let us learn about sericulture. Sericulture means silk farming. The rearing of silkworm are of for obtaining silk is called sericulture. Sericulture is a very old occupation in India. India produces a lot of silk on a commercial scale. Before we discuss the process of obtaining silk, it is necessary the production of silk. So now let us learn about production of silk. In order to produce silk, the silkworm developing inside the cocoon as pupa is not allowed to mature into an adult silk moth. So as soon as the cocoon is formed, it is used to obtain silk fiber and developing silkworm gets killed. 
Some of the silkworms are however allowed to leave and mature into silk moth so that they can lay eggs to produce more silkworms. There is a variety of silk moths which look very different from one another and the silk yarn that they yield is different in texture that is coarse, smooth, shiny etc. Thus, tussar silk, kosa silk, moga silk etc. are obtained from cocoons spun by different types of moths. The most common silk moth is the mulberry silk moth. The silk obtained from the cocoons of mulberry silk moth is called mulberry silk. Mulberry silk is soft, lustrous and elastic and can be dyed in beautiful colors. Now let us learn about pure and artificial silk. Pure silk is obtained from cocoons of silkworm and it is made up of protein. Artificial silk is obtained from wood pulp and it is made of modified plants material called cellulose. Just like silk, wool is also made up of protein. So, a piece of woolen fib fabric also burns, giving the smell of burning hair. The thread which burns, giving a smell of burning paper, will be cotton fiber. Cotton and paper both are carbohydrates. Paper is made up of cellulose, obtained from wood pulp. So, on burning, cotton and paper both give similar smell. Now, a female silk moth lays hundreds of eggs at a time. These eggs are warmed into a temperature suitable for hatching. This is known as incubation. After hatching, the silkworm are fed on fleshy chopped mulberry. For six weeks, the worms eat almost continuously and increase in size. And at the end of this period, they are ready to spin their cocoon. Branches of trees or shrubs are placed in their rearing houses. The worms climb these branches and make their cocoon out of one continuous thread, taking about 8 days for the process. And this process is called spinning of the cocoon. The amount of usable silk in each cocoon is small and about 5500 silk worms are required to produce 1 kg of raw silk. Now, for obtaining silk, silk moths are reared and their cocoons are collected to get silk thread. The female silk moth. Now the cocoons are collected and boiled in water to kill the insect inside them. The resulting fibers is known as raw silk. The silk fiber separates out. The process of taking out fiber from the cocoon for use as silk is known as railing the silk. Railing is done in a special machine. Silk fibers are spun into silk threads which are woven into silk cloth by weavers. Now let us learn about the health condition of workers in the wool and sericulture industry. Now workers employed in almost all processes of sericulture industry are adversely affected by a number of diseases. First is shortest disease. People working in the wool industry sometimes get infected by a bacterium called anthrax. It leads to a fatal blood disease called shortest disease. Second is respiratory disease, inhalation of vapors arising from cocoon, undergoing steaming, cooking and reeling produces breathing problem, asthma and other bronchial ailments. Scabies and other in skin infections, the first step in reeling is the boiling of cocoon in water to kill the worms. As a result of constant dipping in boiling water, the skin of workers become raw and blistered resulting in the peeling of the skin of hands and feet. That's all for today. Thank you.